بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم جميعا واهلا وسهلا بكم Ladies and gentlemen very good afternoon I'd like to ask you first a question how many of you are interested in science Well wow good number And how many of you had ever did a research before Ooh, number is decreasing Okay how many of you are interested to do research in future or think of doing research. Wow, that's good. Okay, why research? Why do you think we do research? There is a question, and we need to find an answer, and that's why we do a research. But actually, people do research for many reasons. Some people are, do, are, are doing research for fun, for excitement, part of their work, like economic, uh, some uh, cost-effectiveness studies, some people do research for academic promotion. Some people do research because it's part of their mandates. Some people do research because of less good reason, fame, recognition, status, prestige, and so on. If I ask you another question, how many you think out of, this, uh, of the research that have been uh, done in the past six or five decades uh, how many publication has been generated? 1,000? 200,000? 1 million? Well, the answer is massive publications uh, from the past five, six decades across the globe. Okay. And most of this, some of these publications are published in the top reputable journal like Cell Science Nature, with, and some of them are in the middle class but massive number of publication. And so, in Oman, from 1970 to 2010, there was a study uh, looked at Oman and how many publication has been generated from research. It shows uh, that 1, around 1,000. So Oman somewhere in the middle when compared to GCC countries. Well, what about, this is in terms of a quantity, what about the quality? In terms of the quality, half of these publications are in journals of less, in impact factor less than one. And so, if I ask you now, how much of these publications globally got translated to something which serve humanity, something which improve health in any way, something which uh, makes our life happier and, healthy and healthier? The answer actually is very minimum. Mr. Simon, who is the Australian Education Minister, said how to measure the value of research against things that mean something rather than only allocating funding to researchers who spend their time trying to get published in journals. So, where is the problem? And what is the problem? Well, it's a loop with three chains. Researchers, decision and policy makers, and people. Researchers work in their comfort zone. They have their own language. Decision makers, they have their own language. They have their own agendas, and they have their own interests. And people are looking for what this study will, uh, or what I need from this study. And so, if we look at this example, it's about apoptosis, which is a programmed cell death. The discovery of apoptosis has been discovered 30 years back. But actually, it reached, or it got applied in reality for human uh, health uh, only after 30 years. And so, what are the problems? Well, it's not just one issue. It's multifactorial components and issues. The first thing, one of the issues, pharmaceutical companies, they're not interested to, for example, do product, vaccine, drug, for, uh, for something which will not generate revenue or which will have uh, less profit. Decision makers, they have their own priorities, they have their own interests, sometimes fixed mind about one thinks. It's many factors. Healthcare system, lack of finance, 
may be inadequate human resources, the uh, influence of media, educational uh, environment, political fa factors, you name it, so many factors. So, which, which, which is like an, like an obstacle to uh, uh, knowledge translation. In Oman, from 1970 to 2012, so over a period of 42 years in Minister of Health, only five studies translated in policy, in a form of policy strategy program, which is really sad. Five studies in 42 years got really, like the community, the humankind benefited from them. What about my personal experience? I studied my master and PhD in Australia. And I, alhamdulillah, got a very interesting finding, which I'm proud of. And out of this finding, I published many papers. At that time, I was like, okay, let me publish it. Very happy. But when I think back, and Alhamdulillah also got uh, rewarded from reputable uh, organizations like UNESCO and uh, Australian Society for Medical Research. But did that, when I think about it, did I deliver the finding of the research to people? Do I do that step like by improving uh, health? Actually, when I think, is it Adra's problem? The answer is no. Pharmace I need pharmaceutical companies. I need decision uh, makers and policy makers on board in order to uh, translate that knowledge. So what's next? In 2012, I was appointed as a director for a uh, research and study center. And alhamdulillah, I was involved in, uh, I was in the committee for 2050 Vision for Health. We tried at that time to think differently. In my first part of life, I was thinking of okay, doing basic research. Okay, this health research vision is like a roadmap for the country to boost research. So I thought, okay, instead of looking at the bottom-up approach, which is from researcher interest, and then to decision makers to call for action, let me think other way around. Do it from top-bottom approach, where we start the call for research from the leaders and from decision makers. So we try to think about what are the needs for health, what are the requirements for health research? And we thought to establish a guideline which about health research priorities in terms of health system research and also uh, disease and risk factors, which are short term, intermediate term, and long term. At that time, there was no funding for research in Ministry of Health, no single real allocated. So we fought for it, and we established a system or a guideline for how to distribute this funding and who should get it. And then uh, we established a health research system, which is kind of a research observa observatory with two databases about research proposal, about uh, uh, reports and publication. And then it's very important guideline about conduct of clinical studies and trials which has all the requirements and checklists to do a uh, uh, clinical trial. And recently, last month, we uh, published research proposal guideline with the, all the components and elements. Well, that is a system for health research. But, and they are all the same theme, and you can find them in the website for the center. But will that make me still feel happy, satisfied? Did we? Do what? Not yet. And I think far more need to be done. Uni Unilevers is a company, a very successful company, and they are producing a lot of products. And they introduce a model for change, which relates to uh, behavioral psychology of human being. But they suggested that in order to succeed, in order to do or reach the ultimate goal and impact which you, you want to, you need to make, make it understood. Make it understood in different language. 
make it understood like researchers to decision makers, researchers to pharmaceutical companies, researchers to patients. Make it easy, make it desirable, make it rewarding, and make it a habit. And I will add to that, make it personal. Make it the driving goal that in any issue you do, you want to see the ultimate goal, the, the ultimate impact of it. We need to think outside the box. We need to think of different innovative ideas. My passion for research will continue. And my love for research will continue because being uh, an, an inquisitive mind, I think if at first you don't succeed, search and search again, that's why it's called research. قال تعالى قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون وفي أنفسكم أفلا تبصرون. Thank you.